the person who's kicking by putting yourself on only one leg again. So basically stay on two legs because two legs are better than one. So when when I kick, I have one leg, but he has two legs. So don't don't go on one leg. So it's one leg, one leg. Yeah, he has an advantage. So here's his solution. He's like, don't go up on one leg. Instead, you interrupt the kick. See how he turns from his waist? And how you call this bit L. L is like your torso. Especially if you crowd. But he's catching it with the palm of his hand. In a fight, he'd use his elbow. This is like the practice version, so he's not hurting me. But look at where he's hitting me. He's hitting me on the thigh Very above good. my knee. It stunts my kick. Like, my kick doesn't reach him. And then because I'm on one leg and he's on two, he can then hit me with that. Me? <laughs> That's not messing around. That is, like, out. When you kick up. Look at how. Oh. See how he blocks my kick and then changes his position. He steps sideways into me so that he can then launch that backwards fist. It's very symmetrical and even. So the force of his hand blocking my leg above the knee dissipates the power of my kick. Been dissipated mm -hmm. will be really like you. Yeah. yeah. If you kick me, if you kick me. Sarah Mon Khan goes back there to start like teaching like this like woman. So He's saying, saying if you catch the kick, it hurts your same, ribs. Same me, I forget exactly. to move. Even if you move to the side a little bit, you're still <laughs> taking some of that impact. <laughs> you're not taking any impact when you dissipate the power <laughs> of that <laughs> kick <laughs> with the block <laughs> first. <laughs> It hurts your leg, man. Like he's doing it gently. And because he's elbowing, like right on the IT band. Oh. So this is how you actually block it. You don't need to use the, the heel of your hand, although you could. But this is so much nastier. Like that would stop me from kicking really fast. One more. And because a kick is like the highest scoring point in Thailand, people kick a lot. But he goes so across. Take away someone's kick. You've taken away a huge weapon. So see how he just uses that arm to dissipate the kick first? And if I decide to go higher, he's got that elbow on the other one. See how he's starting to crowd my space now? <laughs> he's getting excited. Look at his feet. The footwork in this is so like measured. He hits. He hits above my knee, yes. so I actually can't even extend my leg. Like yeah, you interrupt it. Before he can move. Yeah. So we're talking about this kick to the leg when someone is trying to kick. If you Where does nail he hit you? someone above the, the knee like and like where? straighten their knee while they're trying to kick, be very uh, but ask him where it hits you. So that's a teat. He's like, it's not like this. See how the kick comes up from nothing. Ooh. And it's powerful. So they asked for a hit. He's like, you can hit all different places. Low leg, thigh, or hip. He's like, if you want to go high, the opponent can back up. Like, they can just do this bend back to get out of the way, which is why the teeth is not ideal. You can't really get out of the way of that kick. You can't really see it coming, and you're already kicking when he uses it, so you're not going to, like, move your leg out of the way. It depends on what what the opponent's body position is and where your rhythm is. But you can kick to the face or you can kick to the I'll well, have him show you the kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, do it <laughs> yourself. Oh, yeah, 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 so you learn. So here we're trying to put it in context. And I'm trying to do his same like submarine kick. Look at his hands and his waist. The kick comes from the waist and I'm just like flicking it from my knee. <laughs> That's not how you do it. Oh, close. Oh, he moved close together. See how his hip comes first? Hip. hip. His feet come together. Then his feet come together and he kicks. Samart does that on a teeth. Right down the center line. It's like how everything you have like to, Samart's teeth. to use your waist. He says everything comes from your waist. Punch. This entire thing. Punch Look at his like punch. This. I love his punch. Uh, elbow like this. Like this. Uh, 
it will go like this. Right? See how it comes from his hip? Everything is the waist. Not just your pant, not just your hand. The twist of his waist to me looks like a golf swing. Again, I don't play golf, so I don't know the details. But it looks like that same in the twist of his hips and the way his knee bends to kind of like allow that lax. Bring your feet together. I could not get this kick in his mm, presence. I've played with it since, and I actually used it on my trainer when we were sparring a couple of times. It's kind of cool. Here he's explaining the importance of the breath. Uh, wait three minutes for fighting. Mm. And he's like, in any given fight, a round three. is three minutes, and you have two <laughs> minutes of rest. <laughs> you don't have to sit down. Mm. Stand up and just breathe. He says I in agree. each minute, no, you should down. get 11 breaths. He stopped with his senior class and had mm. them breathe before starting again. Yeah. And it was totally like part of the training. When I was like, watching his called, senior class, that had them stop and breathe as part of the lesson, times. like between things. A minute, 11 times. Okay. So he's like, in a fight, if you have two minutes between rounds, breathe 22 times. So when I intercept his arm, that's doing damage it's like to an soft uppercut. tissue. Or hook and an uppercut together. It's swingy, and the elbow stays really close to the ribs, so it's the same as what Sagat and Char Chai teach in how to throw um, punches. Both of them are in the library teaching that. I love how Shri Mankhon has to take off his watch to do these things all the time. Oh. These two men are very uh, close in age. I think they're maybe one or two years apart in age. And they have very different experiences. Shri Mankhon coming from ring fighting and General Tom Mankhon coming from the military and having uh, learned and taught this style for so long. <clears throat> he is the last living uh, student of the original teacher of the Lertwit style. So I'm saying there's a nerve in the arm there <clears throat> that when you hit that, it does a lot of damage. <clears throat> Look at how close his back arm is mm -hmm. to his body. All the way over. Before he does the step with his leg All the way to like whip it around. See how he completely turns his body in order to land that. Oh, that would be so strong. So he's saying you can elbow the arm and then as you come back with your elbow, you're hitting the face. This reminds me of my very first teacher, Master K. He had a lot of like hit them on the way back movements as well. So he's saying even if you miss with the elbow, you have a chance to hit them on the way back. He comes over here to show me on the bag. And the craziest thing is how much power he generates in this thing. Look at his feet in the mirror so you can see how he's standing. And then you can see his heel just barely come up because it's not in the legs. You bend your knees so that you have flexibility, but it's all coming from that turn of the waist. He's saying you can knock someone out if you hit them in the ribs with this. Break a rib with that for sure. He's like, do it a hundred times. And I'm like, you'd have to do that uh, many hundred okay. times. <laughs> to me, it looked like he was hitting on the outside of his elbow because he chicken wings it so hard. But he shows me that it is still on the bone. But he's talking about where his weight is. So his weight shifts onto the back leg and then onto the front leg uh, as he twists. <laughs> it up. But I have a hard time learning this one from him because of that hesitance. In the same way that I was throwing that elbow, if you hesitate on it, you don't arm is not bent, your waist. Sylvie. Like you don't make your arm one piece because you're hesitating and trying to pull it. So you're like interrupting the chain of command. 
He's saying this is dangerous because you can break your arm if you don't throw it right.